Hi wonderful people and welcome back to my channel <laughs> and if you're new here thank you for being here welcome to our family we're the precious family do hit the subscribe button if you haven't subscribed already so today we're going to talk about if you want to buy a house you need to listen to me you need to listen to the tips I'm about to give you in order for you to have the opportunity to buy your own property. Just a bit of background, I bought my house when we were 25. We own our property right now. We own a two bedroom flat within um, the city of London. But in order to buy that house, we had to make some big changes. We had to save money. We needed to build, come up with our deposit in order to even get onto the property ladder. So if you're interested in how you can go about making money, saving money and being able to buy your own property, then stay tuned. So let's get straight into it. So the first things first, in order to go anywhere, you need to know where you're at right now. It's important to identify your current state in terms of your earnings, your outgoings. So I would advise you do a tracker for the month or you get your statements from previous months and sit down, go through it and identify how much you're spending each month and there's a section I want you to create as miscellaneous. So things you don't necessarily need it to purchase, but you went and bought anyway, you can go into the miscellaneous section so you can see how much money you're spending in a section that's not necessarily necessary. All of that section can be deleted straight away. You can get rid of that section and save yourself some money. So that's the first thing you need to do. The second thing you need to do is to identify your net worth. How much are you currently worth? What do you actually own? Do you own anything? If you're in your early 20s, you probably don't. If you're a teenager, you probably don't. In your 30s, maybe you should have something. If you don't, that's okay. At least you can identify where you're at at this present moment so you have something to work towards. So that's the first thing you need to do. You need to um, do a budget and highlight in all your spending and your income and check out areas you can cut out. And secondly, identifying your net worth. What do you already own so far? So now let's move on to the second thing visualization i call it money visualization in the sense of write down what you need in order to work towards it if you don't aim at anything there's nothing to aim for i did this personally when i needed to identify how much money would i need in order to buy my property or to buy a property in knowing that i needed say 25,000 pounds, I wrote, I wrote out how I'm going to go about making this money or how I can go about getting this money. It could be something you haven't done yet, but at least you're in your mind, setting in your mind that this is what I want to do. And this is how much it's going to cost me. Also doing simple things like identifying the kind of property you want. I personally wanted a property in London. Someone else may want a property in, I don't know, Newcastle. It doesn't matter wherever you want your property. I want you to do some research, find out, please do get a pen and write these down. Find out how much does an average property cost in the area you want to live in. If you know it's going to cost you 300,000, then you need to know that you need to maybe save up 10% for your deposit. You also need to identify how much the additional cost will um, cost you on top of your deposit. Because you have to think about things like your solicitor's fees. You have to think about admin fees. You have to think about stamp duty. You have to think about your moving fees. You have to think about furnishing your property fees. So even if you've got your 10%, let's use 300,000 pounds, for example, and you've got your 10% um, which is a 30,000 pounds, you probably need an additional 10 to 12,000 pounds on top of that in order to complete the whole process of buying your property. So you can write the figure of 42,000 pounds is what I need in order to get onto the property ladder. It may seem like a big number and it is a big number, but there are ways of being able to save money in order to buy your property. There are government schemes that are available to help you get onto the property ladder quicker. Some places may offer you 5% deposit. Some places, for example, what I did per was go go through the shared ownership route so we bought half our property initially bought a cheaper home half the property so we only needed to raise the deposit for half the property and we we're paying rent on the other half until we were able to get gather the money um, to buy the other half of the property which was came from releasing money that we've already put into the property on the half that we've been paying mortgage um, deposits into to buy the other half so that's another way of being able to get onto the property ladder so there are different ways but the first thing is to write down how much is going to cost you and you've identified your spending now 
we need to figure out how we can save money. Saving money is a mindset. You can always find ways of saving some form of income. For example, I've done a video on 16 things I cut out of our, fine, our, our monthly spending that saved us over £5,000 in one year. There are always ways of going extra mile to save even more money. So for example, us personally, between me and my husband, in order to save money to raise our deposits, after we got married, we rented a flat, we're paying the London rate, paying bills, everything. But after a year and a half, we were like, wait, if we ever want to get onto the property ladder, we're going to have to do something drastic in order to save some money to be able to buy a house because we need to raise that deposit. So what we did was we moved back to my husband's mother's house. It wasn't the easiest of things to do, but we rented a room in her house. We were paying every month a small amount, which was a fraction of what we were paying if we were, um, if we were still in the property or renting a one bedroom flat. Because at the time we didn't have any children. We were very active. We were both working full time. We were both very active in our local church. So we were always out. So we just needed somewhere to place our head and I was happy to do that for a year or so we actually did it for 11 months um somewhere to place our head for 11 months and in that time we we're able to save enough money and buy our property and after we left we haven't had to go and rent again we are in our own house we own 100% of this property now and we're now on a property ladder which is going to give us more opportunity to get Onto, um, to go up the ladder. So the key is to try and get onto the ladder so you can go up the ladder. So in a few years time, if we work hard, save hard, we'll be able to buy our family home. Where we're currently in a two bedroom flat, we'll be able to buy a four bedroom house and still be on the property ladder. So um, that's something to do. So how to save money, cut out gym memberships if you don't go to the gym, cut out going on holiday, if you, if you don't own a property and you don't own and you're paying rent there's no point spending three four thousand pounds going on a long haul holiday when that money could be used towards something and you can go on that holiday later on down the line cut out um simple things like another thing you can cut out is not taking out loans or going up getting things on finance for example getting a car getting your furniture getting your bedding if you can't afford it at a time you don't buy it so that's another way of saving money. Do check out uh, my video on the 16 things we save. So to get more ideas of the different simple, very simple, but effective things um, that we did in order to save a lot of money, increase your income. So there are many, many different ways. I'll link below how um, 13 different apps that we use to make extra money in our household. I'll link below, um, ways to work from home opportunities to make extra money. The key is you're going to have to work for your money. There's no way of making money, fast money, that I will not give you advice. Here's a, um, 10 ways to make 10,000 pounds in a day. I don't have that. <laughs> advice available to you at this present moment i might do in the future but at this present moment i don't have that advice but there are simple things you can do in order to make extra money um, to supplement your household income simple things like scanning your receipts which will allow you to make some extra money and put it towards your monthly bills these things seem like insignificant but these insignificant things do add up to become something significant. Me and my husband were able to make 4,000 pounds or so from just one app. So there's always ways of generating income. I would link below ways to develop your skills in order to generate more income. It's important to develop yourself as an individual and as technology as is advancing, you need to catch up with the times. Key skills that are now in search, editors, podcast note takers, graphic designers are in need, bloggers are in need, content creators are in need, YouTube um, script writers are in need. There are new opportunities that are not already existing that are now becoming essential and needed because the way the world is going. So it's key to always build your skills. Just having a degree is not enough anymore. Just having qualifications or working in a company for 30 years is not enough anymore. So I would advise that always focus on building your skills. Ch check out Skillshare. They're an amazing um, platform that offers in-depth courses that allows you to build your skills, develop who you are as a person that will allow you to generate more income, to even change your careers. Another way of making um, money is to do overtime in your actual job that you're currently in. People frown upon working sometimes, but working and doing overtime allows you to make extra money each month. 
even if you're making an extra 200 pounds each month it's still money it will allow you to supplement your income and allow you to save more and the final area i want to talk about is the mindset you need to change your mindset in order to succeed the mentality that i don't make enough money so i don't have anything to save is a blockage in mentality is a mentality if even if you can save a pound that is still considered saving and like things like seeing something for 200 pounds reduced to 30 pounds something you don't need but you see it and you think oh i'm saving 170 pounds no you're spending 30 pounds and you spending that 30 pounds means you don't have 30 pounds to save if it's something you don't need if it's something you need then that's a bargain i'm all for that bargain check out all my bargains on my other videos <laughs> go get yourself some bargains <laughs> But if it's something you don't need, but you think you're getting a good deal because you're saving 170 pounds, mm -mm. time to change that mindset. And I hope this video helps anybody out there. If it does help you or you've learned something new, please do comment below. Do write down something I might not have mentioned that other people can use to help them develop themselves, to help them save money to buy their property. And I hope you liked this video. Please do like, share and subscribe. And don't forget to put that notification button on so that whenever I post, you're with me. Do follow me on Instagram. Do check out my blogs. I'll link everything below. Have a wonderful day. Mwah!